Hey, yo, what it do, LKC crew? <laughs> if you know where I took that from, comment below. But today, we're going to go over the seven deadly sins as guitarists. And before you comment, yes, I ripped this off from every other YouTube video I saw of this. And no one has posted the seven deadly sins as guitarists yet. So this is the best chance for me to make this video now while the idea is still hot. We're going to go in ascending order of the seven deadly sins according to Wikipedia. So that means these first sins, they're not so bad. But the last sin, that's an S tier sin. That's a really bad sin. And if you are the last sin of the seven deadly sins, you are the most sinful guitarist. First major sin. What is that? The sin of lust. So what does Wikipedia say about lust? According to Wikipedia, lust is the tense longing. It is usually thought of as intense or unbridled sexual desire. And then here we have lust from Full Metal Alchemist. Now, which guitarist would you say represents best the sin of lust? Which guitarist is known for being a sexual or just very sexual in general, having lots of sex? I don't know about you guys, but to me, that is best represented by John Mayer. Now listen, I don't even listen to John Mayer, but as a casual as a non-John Mayer fan, I know this guy sleeps around or I, I know he does or that's what I know him for, sleeping around. And I pulled up John Mayer and the first picture I see is of him and a bunch of girls, right? He has Jennifer Aniston, Taylor Swift, Katy Perry, and you can name so many more girls he's been with. And I don't know any of his songs besides Gravity and this other one. Your Body is a Wonderland. I mean, come on, John Mayer. We get it. You get lots of chicks. And he is the best representation of lust. It has to be John Mayer. Next sin. The sin of gluttony. Now, what is gluttony? <laughs> According to Wikipedia, gluttony is the overindulgence and overconsumption of anything to the point of waste. Now, a lot of us think of gluttony as food. A lot of us think of gluttony as getting fat. And, you know, I could cheap out, and I could just put BB King. I could put Kingfish as a sin of gluttony. But I feel like that's a low blow, because we're thinking about guitar, and gluttony could apply to not just food, it could apply to drugs. And I think drug use and alcohol use is much more in line with the seven deadly sins in terms of guitar. And who would that be? There are so many. There could be Jimmy Page. There could be Jimi Hendrix. But I think the best representation of gluttony is none other than Hello Slovak. Now, if you don't know Hello Slovak, he is the original guitarist of the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And he died of a drug overdose. According to Wikipedia, it was a heroin slash cocaine overdose. You could even say John Frusciante himself represents the sin of gluttony. But I think Hello Slovak represents it best because he actually died of gluttony. He died of drug overdose. I was thinking of putting Jimi Hendrix on this list. But then again, we actually don't know if he drove drug overdose. Some people said he was drowned. So, he gets the pass. And Hillel, unfortunately for you, bud, you are the seven deadly sins of guitarists. Gluttony. Next sin. The sin of greed. Now, what is Greed. Greed is an insatiable desire for material gain. 
It could be food, money, land, possessions, social value, such as status or power. But for me, as a guitarist, I feel like greed would be selling out. It'd be losing your musical, losing your music. I'll, I'll edit that out. I'm the best guy on YouTube for editing. But yeah, it's losing, losing your soul, selling your soul for money. And a lot of guitars could be considered to sell out, selling their soul for money. It could be Metallica. It could be the Chili Peppers. I'm pretty sure Fushante was the highest paid guitarist at one point. It could be Guns N' Roses. It could be any big name act. It could even be Rage Against the Machine. Damn it. Tom Rill was a good one because his tickets are hella expensive. I should have put him. But when I made this PowerPoint, none other came to mind than this guy, James Valentine. Now, many of you probably don't know James Valentine. Like, who the fuck is this guy? Well, it's because he sold out. He plays in a well-known band called Maroon 5. If you don't know Maroon 5, I don't know if you've been under a rock, but they are technically the biggest band out there. It's not just Adam Levine. It's an actual band. And if you hear their earlier stuff, they were actually a good band. Songs about Jane, This Love, even their really early stuff, they had some actual legit music. And James Valentine is a legit guitar player. I mean... James Valentine, what happened, man? Why'd you sell out? He was in the biggest band, and then they just sold out to appeal to just the white moms in the suburbs. And to be honest, James, I am low-key jealous of you. I wish I could make millions of dollars playing the same four chords over and over again. But hey, that's how life works. And James... You represent the sin of greed, and I'm still low-key jealous of you. Next sin, the sin of sloth. So, what does sloth refer to? Like the animal, sloth refers to being lazy. According to Wikipedia, it is the most difficult sin to define, since it refers to a lot of ideas, such as dating, antiquity, mental, spiritual, a lot of shit. But actually, when I, was when I was researching this video, I found a Reddit post under the r slash Fantano. And this user put a great analogy for sloth. And he says, sloth is ripping off other artists, not learning or getting better at your craft, and just doing genres you have no passion for. So this guitarist is not from my own brain, but from this Reddit post's brain. And I'll link the Reddit post in the description or as a pinned comment so you can check it out yourself. And no other person defines sloth better than this motherfucker. M-G-K. Machine Gun Kelly. Now, Machine Gun Kelly, I don't really know him for guitar or pop punk now that he does. What I knew him for was for his beef with Eminem. And then I checked him after I saw this post. And I'm like, holy shit, he does pop punk now. Holy shit, he has a signature guitar. That looks horrible. <laughs> and I didn't even know he switched to pop punk or, or, or rock in general. So you could say that he is the sin of sloth. He has no desire to be a rock artist, according to this Reddit user's post. He is a culture vulture. He fled to rock. He became a punk musician. And according to other guitarists, his guitar kind of sucks. He's lazy. And mostly, his work comes from Travis Barker. That's according to this Reddit user. And I cannot agree more. MGK, you are the definition of sloth. Next up is the sin of wrath. Now, what is Wrath? Wrath is not just a handsome Giga Chad from an anime. No. Wrath could be defined as an uncontrollable feeling of anger, rage, 
and even hatred. Wrath often reveals itself in the wish to seek vengeance. Now, which guitarist represents Wrath the best? Honestly, I had a hard time picking this because I was looking for guitarists who actually committed, you know, first degree blank. I want this video to still be monetized. But I think you can assume who that is or what that is. Which guitarist is the most violent? I was thinking of the Gallagher brothers. I was thinking of Sting because they would fight each other after shows. There could be so many guitarists under this. But I think the best guitarist in general to fit this would be Slipknot guitarist, Mick Thompson. Now, why Slipknot? Why Mick Thompson? Why not Jim Root? Well, I have a few reasons for this. First reason is Mick Thompson looks meaner. He looks scarier. And secondly, their band hits stuff. They have clowns. Clowns are scary as fuck. And clowns hit shit in their songs. They hit metal drums with baseball bats. And that's why I have Mick Thompson representing the sin of wrath amongst all guitarists. Next sin. This is our penultimate sin. So this is the second worst sin according to Wikipedia. And this is the sin of envy. Now what is envy? According to Wikipedia, it is characterized by an insatiable desire, like greed and lust. It can be described as sad or resentful and covet covetousness towards the traits or positions of someone else. So basically, in English, <laughs> it means the sin of envy means you really want to be somebody or you are really jealous of somebody and you really want to be them, but you can't. You can never live up to their name. Now, who represent the sin of envy? This was the first sin I had in my mind, and this is none other than little bro, Josh Klinghoffer. Now, who is Josh Klinghoffer? I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I'm glad you asked. <laughs> if you know that, comment below. <laughs> but Josh Klinghoffer was the replacement guitarist for the Red Hot Chili Peppers. And throughout his tenure with the Red Hot Chili Peppers, everybody knew him as just the guy who plays guitar to replace John Frusciante. Now, don't get me wrong. I think some of his songs were good. I liked Rain Dance Maggie. I like Sick Love. But I feel like a lot of the songs with Josh Klinghoffer, it was not about guitar. It was about Flea, about Chad, about Anthony. Josh Klinghoffer could never live up to the name of John Frusciante. And to be fair, I don't think anyone ever will. But in all the interviews with Josh Klinghoffer, and all the in all the questionnaires of Josh Klinghoffer, he always got one question. How does it feel to be the replacement of John Frusciante? And he hated that question because he could never beat John Frusciante. Maybe he was even envious of John Frusciante. So this is why Josh Klinghoffer is the epitome of the sin of envy of guitarists. A few more points. He was inducted into the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame. And no one gave a shit. I mean, did he even earn it? I don't think so. Flea gave a speech. And all he talked about was John Frusciante. Everyone just wanted... John Frusciante. In the slideshow, they did, and they showed John Frusciante. Everyone cheered. Nobody cheered for Josh Klinghoffer. So he is the sin of envy. Last and the most, the worst sin of all, according to Wikipedia, is the sin of pride. And what is pride defined as? Pride is defined as an excessive love of one's own excellence. And another point of pride is that it is thought to be the source of all the other capital sins. So basically, pride's the worst. If you have the sin of pride, you probably have a lot of the other sins in this list. 
and there could only be one guitarist. And I'm pretty sure you know who it is. There could only be one guitarist to represent the sin of pride. And that is none other than the one, the only, Dave Mustaine. I was thinking of putting this list, when I was making this list, sorry, when I was making this list, I felt like Dave Hustain could fit in pretty much every aspect of this list. Except for maybe lust. Because I don't know if he's known to be a womanizer. But Dave Mustaine, what can we not say about him that does not apply to this? I don't know. He has nice hair. That's probably it. But Dave Mustaine, he was the guitarist of Metallica. Apparently, he was such a douche and narcissist, they kicked him out of the band. And he was so jealous, so full of wrath, so full of envy, he made his own band, Megadeth, just as revenge for Metallica. (laughs) And if you ask all of the other members or the former members of Megadeth, they all hate Dave Mustaine. They all call him a narcissist. It's all about him. And apparently, he fires everyone from his bands every so often. So, Dave Mustaine, I hate to say it, little bro, <laughs> but you are the worst sin of all. You are the sin of pride. And that is my list. If you like a part two, if you like this cadence, this rhythm, comment below, and I'll make a part two. Thank you.